Hello, greetings. <laughs> All these little hands wave. That's very sweet. Hey, hey guys. <laughs> oh. Um, I'll give a, I'll give a little introduction, sort of just a, an idea, could sort of set the stage for what we'll be discussing over the next hour and a half. Um, and and then we can discuss the concepts or ideas, or you could just share what's happening. It's it's quite open. Um, so. The message that we're talking about here is in some ways a bit unusual compared to a lot of other sort of messages or teachings that um, people are, are um, have experience with. And basically the, the biggest difference is gonna be that this message is actually not about you. It's not about you learning anything. It's not about becoming something. The message doesn't come from a, a, any sort of recognition that there's a need for anything to happen. There's, there's, it, it's the recognition is that the, intrinsically this appearance has no need. The need arises. I understand that to eat and whatever else and walk and move and, but it has no intrinsic need. Nor does it have any intrinsic lack. So it's not. not there's actually nothing missing in the appearance. Whatever is happening is it it's not it's not a demand so the message has no demand nor does the appearance have any intrinsic demand in what's happening so if that's true what is this if it's not if it has no demand and no expectation and no intrinsic need well it's free it's freedom but like already so whatever's happening that's freedom. It's not a freedom for you, because of course the message isn't about you, nor is the whole appearance actually. But it's, a, it's an unconditional freedom. Whatever's happening is exactly that freedom. And because there's no intrinsic need or expectation or demand of the, of the, on the, of the appearance, um, it's, it's already unconditionally love. It's already complete. It's not becoming complete. It's not trying to become anything. This appearance actually isn't trying to become anything. It is already. Now that, that's not a suggestion of something to do or not to do. It's just that whatever happens is simply what's happening. And if there's an experience that it's a, it comes out of a lack or a need or a demand, then that's an illusion. That's the message. That's an illusion. The illusion is that the appearance isn't complete, that this isn't free, that there is something that needs to happen, and it's up to me to do it. Now, what we're talking about here is that that experience is illusory. So in the illusion, in the sense that when or if it stops happening, it doesn't actually stop as an activity that was happening that ends, it's recognized that it never was happening. That the experience that there's some sort of demand or lack in the appearance was completely illusory. That the experience that was happening was real and happening to me, completely illusory. That there's something that I, that I am in control, that I have a life of meaning and purpose that needs to become to find happiness is completely illusory. Illusory in the sense that it's not happening. It's like not happening now. I understand there might be that experience out there going, well, it is, it's happening to me. And the suggestion is, yeah, I understand that. And it's an illusion. So there's no way to get something that's really not happening to stop happening. So this meeting isn't about the end of that. This meeting is simply partly a description of that experience of separation, the qualities and that it has and the activities that it takes on trying to overcome the experience of separation and a pointing to what this is without that experience. So the end of the individual, the end of that need isn't the satisfaction of all the expectations of the individual. 
So this is a dissatisfying message as well. It doesn't give you what you're looking for. It's not trying to either. All the expectations and all the questions about what this is about, what I need to do, who am I, what's the meaning and purpose of my life that seem to demand answers, they all disappear when the questioner disappears. There was never a real need to have any answers. There isn't actually a real question to this. That just comes out of the illusory experience of something needing to happen or separation. It's already over. It's beginning and over simultaneously. Now, that's it. Now is a little misleading because there isn't anything else, but this is that, this is that, the beginning and end of everything. It's not coming from anywhere. So anything you think of when I say that about the past, this is how, where I came from, I walked down the stairs to get to this room. That's this, that's the beginning endlessness appearing as a memory of the past. No evidence that anything else has ever happened because nothing ever really does. Seems to, but not really. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's basically the, the, a, a good, a good um, summary of the concepts which we'll, we can talk about. Um, if you want to unmute yourself, Yes, thank you. Thank you for the chance. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, actually, I wrote my question down because my English is not very good. Okay. But it's not so long. So, uh, but is my understanding that there is uh, nobody who could make any progression about anything? Hmm. And, uh, but there is a contraction of the body, uh, but nobody can uh, make anything to dissolve this contraction. Hmm. Or is happening or not happening? Nobody knows. It's, it's just, hmm. uh, but uh, in gym body it's happened, and in in Anikos body maybe it never happened. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so if this contraction is never dissolved in in this body in Anikos, yeah. body, does it mean then this identification with the body is always building up itself automatically again and again? Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's not really fair. I no, mean, it's not. It's not. No. <laughs> Nothing to do. Well, there's no one to do it. No one to do it. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, can you can you just say anything about this? Well, thing? there's one thing that you that you said which wouldn't really quite exactly fit with yeah. what I would say. It yeah. didn't happen here. Oh. There's something happening there that's not happening here anymore. But this uh, didn't achieve anything. It didn't get anything. Yeah. But, he, oh, yeah. Okay, so so in gym, but it's something... Uh, stopped that, happening. Uh, yeah. Didn't but but yeah. it stopped happening, but, it, but what stopped happening was revealed not to be happening. Revealed not to be happening. Yeah, so nothing really stopped because there isn't anything really happening. That's the reason I say there isn't anybody there. Yeah. And the experience that something needs to happen is an illusion because it's already not happening. Nothing needs to stop. Okay, so what is the difference between your body and my body? I, nothing. Uh, nothing, okay. But I'm a guy, I'm a man. It looks like I'm a guy and you're I know, a girl. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah, a difference. So, so. I know, I know. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I'm being <laughs> silly. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, uh, but there was a real a realization. Uh, well, I, I, I really wouldn't call it a realization. It really is. It really is sort of the paradox of the whole thing comes down to did something happen here that needs to happen there? And the answer is no. There's something that stopped happening here that never actually happened. So there's no such thing as liberation. But there is the experience there that something needs to happen. And that is the only difference, is that there is an experience something needs to happen. Okay, but if nothing needs to happen, so... Nothing needs why, to happen. Yeah, but why, why, why we are sitting here now and speaking about... Because you think something needs to happen. So if I understand that nothing needs to happen, uh, yeah. is enough? No, no, mm -hmm. understanding, it's not really about understanding. It's not, uh, but I cannot do anything because I am not. Exist. No, there is, there isn't a you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Things so, happen, but there's no way to get closer to what we're talking about 
And at the same time, there's no way to get further away. There's only an illusory experience that there's a further away from this. There never is. I I understand, but uh, okay. Uh, I just, I just about this contraction in the body because yeah. it seems then this contraction is can make some solution about all this. I don't know. Yeah, it seems that something. way. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not. No, well, there's nothing anybody could do about it. Yeah. So the only one yeah. that would want to do something about it is the experience that yeah. it shouldn't be there. That something yeah. needs to happen. I see. I see, but. Uh, so what to do? Nothing to do. No, it's it's it is truly truly hopeless. Truly hopeless. Yeah. So, uh, but it's not make me really happy now. No, it's no, this is not a happy message. No. No. Uh, and that's it. That's it. Yeah. Whatever I will ask, uh, yeah, the the answer will be just the same. No, that's not necessarily true. Questions mm-hmm. often come from a different space. So another question might be coming from a different a different place, I and see. so the answer the answer would be different. And in the end, it's not really about the words. So you can't yeah. predict that now now you're going to decide not to do something because it's hopeless because there isn't anybody there to choose. Yeah. But it's still hopeless. <laughs> it's quite <nice. laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Zabi, if you want to unmute you yourself. Want. Hey, Jim, how are you? Hey, good. How are you? Um, I just want to say thank you. Um, just because questions don't arise anymore. Yeah. But, and yeah, that's about it. And oh, thanks. Yeah. Thank you for I mean, a parent for this individual, a parent individual, like and traveling lighter. That's the only, only way I can put it. Yeah. I watched all your videos and I used to not even be like, I was never able to sit. Mm. And then now everything seems to be quieting down. And Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. It's the message, you know, it's not me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, Igor. Yeah, hi. Hey. Uh, so I want to ask about, um, so you often talk about uh, knowing and unknowing. Yeah. And uh, so I had this question. Let's suppose I take a piece of paper and just draw random lines on it. Mm-hmm. And then I show it to someone else and I'll, I'll tell them that. I drew, I drew something when you need to guess. So there is going to be a good chance that a person will guess something and mm-hmm. that the person will uh, really see some picture in these random lines. Uh, not often, but it will happen more often than expected, I mm-hmm. think. And so at this moment, um, some knowing will happen about this picture. And in this like instant moment, all lines on this paper uh, will have a meaning and will have a purpose. And also as a painter, I will start uh, feeling confined uh, by this meaning, by this knowledge, say if it's a mm. face, I will mm. no longer be able to just add another random line. Yeah, yeah. I will need to, you know, draw yeah. hair or nose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so is this kind of thing that you're talking about, but like with reality? Um, I didn't hear the last thing. Is it reality? So, uh, and w- w- what I'm asking is that we can see that there is some. I, I get what you're saying. Yes. I get what you're saying. And it's very simple. If we say you're looking at the computer screen, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the, the difference we're talking about is when there's that experience of separation, the computer screen is going to be known. It's going to be a fixed reality because a fixed reality is going to be looking at it. Yeah, so, and I guess my question, um, 
is it unknowing that you're talking about is of the same quality as this like knowing and unknowing with this piece of paper experiment no those... no no i'm really talking about something completely different actually um because the knowing i'm talking about is the experience of i am in the body i am real and what's happening is real and part of a real context that's the knowing because recognizing a face you don't need anybody to know anything for that. That's just something that seems to happen. There doesn't need to be an individual to recognize a face. Just like there doesn't need to be an individual for words to appear or for questions to be asked or, mm. yeah. Okay, so knowing still happens. Not in the way I'm talking about, no. Not as a centered, um, real experience. No, that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, that happens, okay. that only happens for the individual. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, no, it like doesn't mean anything to me, but. No. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I can't imagine how it feels to you, but. No, yeah, nobody can. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of nice. Yeah, thank you. But, but really, thank, thanks for this message because uh, it's kind of, well, it's, it's going to be around, so, uh, but. Like I usually notice that uh, whenever I get into some social groups, like mm. any kind of social groups, not necessarily spiritual, but I usually start to evaluate myself according to them. Like, you know, I do something because there is somewhere in the background of my mind, like, I wonder what these guys will think about it. Like, should I meditate for like 10 hours? Should I meditate <laughs> for like, zero hours? Never meditate? No, I, all sorts of things. It's not always very important, but it's always in the back of my mind. Yeah, and you know, it's recently when I started to like hearing this kind of extreme non-dual messages, and I this process starts to happen. I wonder what this you know extreme non-dual guys think about how long I meditate and whether or not I'm doing it right. And I just realize that they just don't care. No, <laughs> well, it just, doesn't matter. Yeah. And yes, and it's such a freedom, really. Yeah, it's not a big thing, and it's really no. Well, really it is kind of big, isn't it? Uh, well, it doesn't help me. Like, it's still someone here, and it's still a lot of suffering, well, the, and it's still a mess. Yeah. But it's really, it's just, it's nice. It's refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Jim. Um, hey. Um, hey, I had a question about, um, you said there's no cause and effect uh, yeah. going on. So if there's a wholeness, I'm... I'm guessing that because it's just, you know, there's no concept of time, but in the illusory um, area of time, is it because there's no, because it's just one thing or oneness or wholeness that it, it can only move as one, that okay. there are no other so, separate moving parts? So the, um, the appearance of cause and effect seems to happen. There seems to be cause and effect. Right. So, right. And time seems to happen. Mm -hmm. It's just not real. Okay. So it's not I'm an illusion. Gonna... It's not an illusion. Right. The only illusion is that you know what this is. Okay. That uh, you so... have, that you have a real continuum through time. And there's a few things that come with that. That experience has, has another a few other illusory qualities with it. That's the only illusion. So if the me um, experiences the world through our five senses, right? Yeah, yeah. So if the me doesn't exist, means that the center doesn't really exist. Absolutely. So is, so is it just a <laughs> bunch of inputs um, with some memories attached? Um, is this entire thing just you know, um, chaos. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So there's no, yeah. there's no center. So this five, no. you know, senses that you think yeah. make up a person is yeah. actually not true. Well, no, the five senses don't actually make up the person. The, um, the, the person or that experience of separation, um, uh, claims ownership or has the experience of ownership of that. So it doesn't really, have ownership of it. That's an illusion. So there's still five senses when okay. there isn't any one. So is this wholeness just 
a bunch of inputs, experiences going on. Continue. I mean, I'm in, in in reality. Is it just the um, the perceptions being gathered? So, um, of you know, billions of people or animals or whatever. Is it just mm. the experiencing going on? Yeah. And so within that, you yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I wouldn't call it experiencing. Um, experiencing is a is another word for me for separation. There's actually no experiencer. That's that's a dream, and what's left when there's no experiencer is this. There aren't billions of people. There's a thinking or thoughts of billions of people, but there's what appears, and that is nothing. The appearance is actually nothing. Appearing, and that's okay. the end of it. That's just the I, end of it. That's even more confusing. Okay. I, <laughs> is it like uh, chasing your own tail? My goodness. Um, I actually don't find the con the the concepts very confusing. Trying to apply them, trying to add them onto things that I think I know, makes it very confusing. But the concepts themselves are are I find very straightforward and simple. This is everything, and mm -hmm. it doesn't need to become. It's not becoming. There's an illusory fact, experience that says it's separate and has an intrinsic need, and that's an illusion. I guess I'm trying to find a way to, to for the undoing, I guess. Oh, the, totally. Uh, that's the confusion. There is no <laughs> way because there isn't anything that needs to happen. The whole of the individual is the, is the experience that something needs to happen for this to be whole. That is the experience of separation because it is already whole. It couldn't be made whole because it is already. It can only be the illusory experience that it isn't. And when that ends, it's recognized there is only wholeness. It's never been different. Um, in a way, it's a relief that is hopeless. I don't know why I'm saying that, but some mm. level, I'm really happy that the mind can never make sense of all this because I yeah. think that would be, and that would be maybe terrible is my sense mm. that if the mind could actually grasp this, yeah. I think uh, maybe it would be really a terrible thing. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, well, it can't, so. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. I, thank you, Jim. All right, thanks, Anu. Hi, Jim. Hey, Arif. Yeah, hi. You've gotten How younger. You oh, wow. So mm -hmm. something's happening. Maybe yeah. I'm becoming yeah. more unreal as well. <laughs> 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 so, uh, like, uh, first thing, I mean, um, now that I guess we're out of the lockdown and stuff, do we have face-to-face -face meetings coming up? Yeah, let's do that. That would be great. That would yeah. be great. Really looking forward to that. So, yeah, I mean, um, I, guess, I don't know if it's a question, but a reflection of the, of, of the thing that I've been talking about in these monthly meetings since the past few months um, I seem, I don't see, I don't think it's me. There, there, there seems to be the settling into this message of just this. It, yeah. That doesn't have to be anything else. It's just this. And there is no center to that. And that, that comes in, but suddenly there is, uh, I guess, some sort of disbelief that there is, uh, something real and unreal at the same time. Yeah. Um, you know, it, that settling in, in settling into um, just this, especially happens at certain moments. Mm. Definitely during the meetings when 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 here, you know. But but at other other times, just like the speaker before was saying, you know, there's the question of cause and effect. Like yeah. for example, I, I have some if I have some piece of food from the fridge that's a bit off and my stomach gets upset, then there is a sense of cause and effect as to why yeah. I'm going to the bathroom all <laughs> again yeah. and again. Yeah. So that seems to be, uh, you know, tying that up seems to be very intense. Um, like the, there is a disbelief that this, how is this unreal? Cause and that effect. That a question. Mm -hmm. Well, in one way, if you want to look at it logically, what you're calling cause and effect is something, a past experience or a past happening having an effect on this that never happens because there isn't a real past for that to have an effect on this 
If there was, you could tell me about it or show it to me. You can't because there isn't real. There is only this. But that's just really concepts. Because what we're talking about can't be described. The end of the reality, the end of the experience of separation, the end of knowing what this is, can't be described. Because there's nothing, nothing takes the place of the experience of the individual. Mm-hmm. But then, for example, if an event, uh, uh, an apparent event happens, mm-hmm. and there is the apparent other witnessing it, um, there is also a description that comes, comes in, you know, talking about the same cause and effect. Yeah, but that would still be what so, is. Right, and that wouldn't be, that doesn't mean that there is actually a connection, causal connection. Being- there is no actuality, but there is apparent cause and effect, just like there's apparent time, ah, an yes. apparent past. So an apparent cause and effect, because there's an apparent, yeah. because time is apparent? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right. So it's, so it, it, I would think it's just a story or the, it's the narrative that it's trying to, you know, make uh, the, the individual is trying to sort of enforce by saying. That's right. This, this is real. This is completely That's real. Right. This is not yeah. apparent. It's not trying to say it. It's actually an experience that it has. Yeah. 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 That's something. <laughs> Actually, it's or nothing. maybe not. <laughs> actually, it's nothing. <laughs> wow. Mm. Thanks, man. Hope to Thank see you. you soon. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Take care. You too. Greetings to your wife. We'll do. I need to make one of my. Uh, I need to try one of my Louisiana dishes once again. Uh, yeah. One of these days, and I'll I'll be thinking of you. I always That's do good. that, and then if it comes out good, I mean, it's, it's gym energy in there. I was there. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> it's all in the room. It's all in the room. It's all in the room. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Sorry. Thank you, man. Hi, Jim. Lena. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Oh, Elena has been pinned. So we'll just stick with Elena. I don't know who said the other thing. All right. Do you hear me? I do. Uh, hello, Jim. Hi. Um, what happened to you practically? We can consider like a shift. Yeah, I mean, it's a story. It, it doesn't, it's not really a shift. Yeah, so to speak. You see, you're, what you're doing, and I just, I'll just use you because it seems to come up a lot, is you're thinking that something is going to happen in the future, which will satisfy the experience of separation or the need for something to happen. It never happens in the future. It never actually happens. The end of that experience of that need is this. So you can't say that it happens. You can't say that it happened here and it didn't happen there because it didn't happen. Nothing ever really happens. So there is no shift, there is no liberation, there is no enlightenment. There's simply an experience that there needs to be a shift or that there needs to something happen. And that's an illusion, it doesn't. But when this contracted energy felt strongly in the body continues for years, for years, and that's- You can't do that, you don't feel it. So this is just an experience, it's nothing yeah. to do with actually the contracted energy. Nothing has anything to do with anything, really. No, the description of the contracted energy and what comes out of it is a story. It's just another story. The, the recognition of the individual and all of its facets and the, the end of the contracted energy and, and how it fits in the body is only, is only recognized when it falls away, which is another story. And also can be confused many times with glimpses. Well, if there's confusion, there's an individual. It's, that, it's simple. But the glimpses are exactly this. It's not far away. It's not, we're not talking about something. This isn't a spiritual message where there has to be some spectacular happening. The end of me, who knows? Maybe there isn't a me left in this meeting. I mean, it's that simple. 
maybe there's no more moving away from this as an experience of something needs to happen. It can just stop. And uh, it's impossible to be missed, let's say. Absolutely, yeah. When it's gone, it's, it's very obvious. Mm-hmm. Because I have a question this day in my mind. I don't know if it's appropriate. Uh, do you believe? No. There's no need for beliefs anymore. Yeah, but anyway, it has to to be a question. It, it's, it will be possible for a human being on this earth to be totally unidentified with the body. I, I think people do reach that state sometimes. It's a, it's a question of how long they hold it for, because not, it's a certain, but, but that's not what this message is about. But that's not what this message is about. We're not, we're not detached. We're not talking about detachment. Actually, it's the opposite. The experience of the individual is, a, in a way, a detachment. I am separate from everything else. The problem, though, is, is it owns everything, collects everything to itself. And so thoughts and feelings are put into the system of I'm trying to become something. And sometimes thoughts and feelings don't do exactly what I want. They're not the right ones. And so what I try to do or what the individual has as an ideal is detachment. Detachment just sounds like a really good solution to the problem. But that's not what we're talking about. That's not, that's not the end of me is not detachment. But what it is? This. But when the shift is happening. Well, but we've already talked about it. there isn't a real yeah, shift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it doesn't mean that identification with the doership stops. No, no, there's just no doer. There's just doing but there's already no doer. Nothing needs to happen for there to be no doer. Nothing needs to happen for that experience to stop. It never actually really happens. It only seems to. So nothing needs to happen for it to stop. So what is the difference between me and you? Nothing. Except maybe the experience that something needs to happen. Okay. Thank you, Jim. All right. Thanks, Elena. Hi, Jim. Hey. Hey, Toby. How's it going? Hey, good. Good. How about you? Hmm. Good. Thanks. So, um, uh, I guess. <laughs> something came up that was like I need to sort of stay vigilant Mm. and like investigate the eye hope springs eternal right yeah and then it was like the it's like the chief of police trying to find out the arsonist (laughs) but the chief of police is the arsonist yeah so it's like you can't really do like. Well, there doing... isn't any chief of police. Right. <laughs> There's <Yeah>. just arson. <laughs> <laughs> it's all burning down. <laughs> yeah. And that's really scary for the me. Like, oh, it's the, horrible. Yeah. Of de- like death. Yeah. Um, and like the lack of sensory experience. Yeah. But I guess you would say that there already sort of is nothing even happening. That's like, right. Is death already. So, yeah. Cause I wouldn't call the sensory an experience. See, it's an experience when it's limited to the appearance, when it's what's happening, when all there is, is what's happening, but really it's no thing sensing so it doesn't have any beginning or end to it there's no beginning or end to this meeting or these conversations or even this word 
Mm. Yeah, that's really scary to the meat. Like, because the meat, like, I think needs time for control. It is time. It is time. Well, it's real time. Like, it's real experience. Like, it's real separation. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it pulled the, oh, I'm going crazy. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. It loves that. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of its favorites. <laughs> it is. It always says that. It always goes, oh, I'm going to go crazy. But you can understand it, can't you? Because all the, all the, you know, the favorite beliefs and ideas of what the appearance is about when, when this is, when this, you know, this is heard in some way or resonated with some of that can fall away and it can be very disconcerting. Yeah, I really love what you said, like, um, like there's no getting closer or moving farther away. Yeah. And so there's that simultaneous, like, relief of, like, oh, I can't move further away. But then that, yeah. like, oh, God, I can't get any closer. Yeah, because it is this. All there is is what's longed for. That's all inclusive. There's no beginning or end of that. It's just that's all there is, is what's longed for. And what's longed for is the end to the need of something to happen. There's no need for anything to happen already. It's a done deal. Right. And even the sense that something needs to happen, nothing needs to happen to that feeling. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Very unconditional. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jim. All right. Thanks, man. Hey, Jim. Hey, ben Benjamin. From UK. How are you doing? It's, it's, it's about seven in the morning now, isn't it? <laughs> I'm out of bed now. <laughs> are you? But we I'm still definitely... aren't, we still aren't blessed with your, with your video. That's all right though. Yeah. No, I don't have a webcam actually up here. Oh, right. Oh, wow. The story keeps changing. That no, doesn't matter. It's good. <laughs> it's good. I know. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Yeah. It's good with this morning. And, um, just after your your um, video call this morning, um, I just saw a video on like Instagram or something, and it was someone flying a drone into a volcano. Yeah, kind of amazing. And you know, this drone's going over the volcano and it's spurting lava in the air, and it's really really exciting. And then you think, oh, yeah. they're going to fly the drone into the volcano. Yeah, and you think, oh man, what's going to happen? And it gets closer and closer, and then like. You know, it just goes black. <laughs> yeah. I kind of thought it was just like a really interesting metaphor for, for yeah. this in a way. Like all these yeah. fireworks, and then it's like, oh. Yeah. Although, although it's not like this is a blank screen. Yeah. It's not like when there's no one, there's just nothing. Sure. It's actually, it's actually sort of the opposite because the experience of the individual separation is sort of living death. I know it sounds yeah. dramatic, but there's, there's a solidity to this, which is a discontent. The sense yeah. that something I need to be, I need to become, I need to do, that's, that's, yeah. And so really the aliveness is the blankness, which is this appearing as this. Yeah. So it's a little, it's, it's actually the marriage of two things. Well, the non-separation of two things, which are not two, which is nothing and this. I guess for me in the metaphor, like the volcano was the, the sort of trying to be right and the kind of, for, for me, I suppose, I've been oh, yeah. in this logical tangle, you know, and it's these yes. fireworks. It's like, no, so-and-so's right. No, so-and-so's right. I'm, you know, I'm right. Um, I've let go of this idea, but this new idea is, and it, this constant trying to, it's like two lawyers in the court, you know, yeah. trying to yeah. duke it out. Yeah. And, yeah. and then it's like the, yeah, because these questions actually keep, still keep coming up, but then it's just like, yeah. And it's kind of, that's like the volcano, just, like the camera just fading yeah. out. And just, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's no, I like, I like that, man. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's good, man. I love these meetings. Fantastic. Oh, great. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for showing up. Thanks, man.
Rajiv. Hi, Jim. Hey, Rajiv. Hey. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that uh, I love these meetings and mm. I'm fun to join these, and it's stunning and amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like you to uh, speak something on the statement "What is never was." What is never was. Ha! <laughs> There's no real past. It's just this appearing as that. There's nothing else. There's no was. There just is appearing as. Yeah, thank you. All right. <laughs> Boris is next. Hey, Boris. Hey, Jim. Hey. Am I audible? Yep, I hear you. Um, yeah, I guess I'm just wondering, um, I've been wondering for a while, um, I hear other people that, um, have, let's say heard this message and there seems to be like a great deal of excitement mm -hmm. or almost like a, a like bright eyed um, enthusiasm. And, I, uh, it, I don't detect anything, um, extraordinary or thrilling about it, I guess. So I'm just wondering, um, I guess there's some, some notion like, am I missing something? Yeah, are you doing it right? Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> no. I was just wondering. No, it's not possible. Or, it's not, this know. isn't, this isn't about anything. So you couldn't miss it. Right. Okay, just checking. Thanks. All right. Aniko, you're on. <gasps> I don't know. Sorry, uh, because I have just my mobile phone and maybe this is why. Sorry, it's just a short uh, question. I just yeah. cannot see you at the moment. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, is there any, uh, is there any uh, fa fear uh, appear in gym body about uh, death, death of the no. body, of the body. You know, it's a, it's again, it's another metaphorical because this isn't dying right now, but there isn't any sort of, um, sort of uh, clingy sort of sense about death. I, I, I'm not sure if I remember this or I'm making this up, but I think I remember there was a sort of a, a clingy sort of feeling about death and dying <clears throat> and sort of not wanting to and sort of having a sort of an underlying fear about it the whole time. And that it's not like there's a fearlessness, but there's not that doesn't arise anymore. No, no. Sort because, of a panicky. Yeah, because there is an understanding then. You no, are it's not an understanding. Body. Not it's not an understanding. And it's, it, it, again, nothing's been added to this <clears throat> that isn't there already. Yeah, yeah. I see. There's just something that no longer seems to happen here that may still be happening there. So there's nothing that this knows that that doesn't know. Yeah. And just, uh, okay, if, if a gym body die, yeah. uh, what's going on after? Uh, there isn't an after. No. There's, no. there's no after this. There's just what is. Yeah, yeah. And so when the body dies, that would be what is. Yeah, and this doesn't make any discomfort uh, in your, because you are not identified. Well, the, the, what, the, the individual fears death because it has the experience that it's really living. Yeah. That what's happening is real. And so yeah. it sees death as the end to something that's really happening, the end of my ability to know. Yeah. Yeah, that's already not happening. It's already that, not happening. No, it's an illusion. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. So that, that, that um, source of fear just isn't here anymore. For example, if you're working on a uh, road and somebody just go there and put a, I don't know, knife or something at your neck, yeah. you just say, okay, come and kill me. I don't, I don't know. 
yeah. Who knows? Who knows yeah, what would happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I imagine yeah. this would try to survive. I imagine the body would try to survive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. Was, yeah. Great question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, you're up. You have to unmute yourself. I think in the bottom left-hand corner, there'll be a symbol with a microphone on it with a red oh, okay. line through it. Yeah, okay. there you are. Okay, thanks. Um, so I've continued to listen to, um, especially your introductions. I love your introductions. I've said this before. Hmm. Somehow, almost whatever state of mind, so to speak, I happen to be in, if I listen to one of your introductions, it, there's, a, there's a glimpse. Oh, wow. However. Oh, yeah, here we go. I was, <laughs> I was, listening, I was listening to a wonderful interview that Emerson had. Mm. And I really, I really want to thank him for all the great work that he's done. And he had, a, he had an interview with Suma where he described yeah. – his thousands, 10,000 hours, I believe, of meditation and all the, all the things he did. And at some point, if I understand correctly, unfortunately, he's here to correct me. He decided that he would just kind of stop hmm. and do other things and not really dwell on this. Hmm. So I said, well, you know, it didn't have a bad outcome for him. Maybe I'll try the same thing. Yeah. I lasted for about two days and yeah. I was back to listening to your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much. And thank you, Emerson. Great. Hey, Jory. Hi, Jim. Hey. <laughs> it's good to talk to you again. I, I talked with you like, I don't know, two or three months ago on one of these. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, I'm, I kind of come at this in kind of an intellectual way. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, um, I, so here, here's a couple questions. One is... Would you say that a baby is in the state that maybe that you are in or, or something like that? Because like a baby doesn't have a sense of I, yeah. um, right? It'd be easier for me to say a cat was or an animal was. I'm not sure about babies. I don't know about babies, but animals are, are have no me. <clears throat> have no experience of separation. Well, so, okay. So if um, an animal, but if an animal protects itself um, yeah. from a threat, and so uh, that makes me think that they have some kind of sense of separation, um, you know, between. Well, there's a functionality, you know, the senses still work. Uh -huh. There's a functionality that's there. Okay. So um, there is this um, psychoanalyst. Um, I don't know a whole lot about um, the depth of this, but um, there was a psychoanalyst. I think her name was Margaret Mahler or something like that. And she sort of had this idea that at a certain age, babies are sort of entrained and sort of basically taught that, hey, you know, you're – this is you and this mm. is me and this is a ball and this is, a, you know, and I'm a thing among things and you're a thing among things. And mm. basically just kind of um, indoctrinated into the yeah. whole scheme of being a thing among yeah. things. Yeah. 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 And so that it seems like what you're saying is that's, um, 
that's the illu- that's the illusion um, of being. No, a- no, no. The 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 um the learning of being a person is is an explanation, and um what we're talking about is actually something that you can't really. I mean, I can give you a story about it, but it's not a um a path. Because if you learned all those things, you could unlearn all those things and find what we're talking about here. But what, what, what we're presenting here is something a little bit different. It's that the experience of separation actually arises in the body out of a contracted energy, beginning with the experience of here. It's literally the first thing that's known is here. And it feels good, feels secure and powerful. And then mm. arises out of that, and I am here, which mm. then takes ownership uh, through that experience of knowing, of owning, of everything else. It actually arises in everything. So in a way, it sounds, it sounds very different than the story she was saying. Because conditioning, there's still conditioning in this brain. Mm. Mm. I mean, words are conditioned. I mean, that, that, this, that this brain uses words. Mm-hmm. That's English and not Russian Mm, mm. So, so like you're saying, it's not, it's not the point of being um, sort of um, Well, what I'm saying is there's no linear explanation for what we're talking about. Mm, mm, mm. Because there's no path to what's being suggested is everything already. Mm-hmm. there's just the experience that that's been lost or that something needs to happen. Mm-hmm. And that is everything or wholeness appearing as or being the experience of something needs to happen. So it's truly hopeless. Because <laughs> if it's already that, what are you going to do to make it that? Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, I, I'm kind of going, uh-huh, uh-huh, because, <laughs> I, because I don't know what else to say. Yeah. And, it, and it's sort of like, you know, I sort of get the words that you're saying. I mean, the mm-hmm. other thing that I hear or I, I, I get an image of like um, the ocean mm-hmm. and the waves are like coming up and that I have this idea that I'm just the wave. And yeah. I'm so- yeah that's way too that's way too much separation for me it's more like being in the absolute center of the ocean about a mile down in the middle 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 right Mm -hmm. and then suddenly having the experience that one drop is separate from the ocean Mm -hmm. and now that drop has an expectation of what it's going to be like when it can be part of the ocean again something really big is going to happen it's going to be a big experience something really is going to change but yeah. what would change if that drop was no longer having that experience of being separate? It's like, um, yeah, it's like, oh, oh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So like talking to you right now, I'm not, I'm just sort of talking to, I, I mean, I can't even say it because I'm not talking to myself, but there's, there's talk- just talking happening. There's just talking happening. Yeah. Because we're just in the ocean together everybody is just in the ocean together well there's no we and there's no everybody there's just ocean (laughs) so we can't even we can't say it i mean like can't say a damn thing about it it's all too too uh oh you were cutting yeah, out no, there, Jim? I didn't. I don't. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I heard. Yeah. I don't know where I left off. Um. Yeah. No. It's doesn't not, matter. Doesn't matter, right? No. Nah. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. That's that's good. I mean, I mean, the only thing I'm confused about, and but I don't. There's no. I don't know if you need to explain it again. Is like when you were talking about that. This feels like now. That was different from the baby being basically trained that it's a it's an individual thing. Um, but yeah. I don't know. That part didn't make Well, a baby sense. being trained is a, is a linear explanation. Mm-hmm. And that isn't, that isn't where this experience of separation comes from. 
mm, mm. through being trained. Mm, mm, mm. So that, right, the linear experience of being is the thing of this contraction and just feeling like if I could only, there's something wrong. Yeah. This, this picture and if I could just, you know, it's like what I'm doing right now. It's like, oh, I have this intellectual thing. I'm thinking there's something missing. And if I could yeah. just, yeah. Okay. Totally. Got it. Got it. All right. Good. Okay. I'm glad I asked you that question because I've been wondering about that. And so um, good, good talking to you again. <laughs> yeah, you too, Joy. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hey, Elena. I can't hear you. It's not connected. It is. Yeah, there it is. Um, do you do you still have the instinct of survival? Well, I don't, but the body seems to. There isn't anyone. Nobody has anything, but already. <laughs> But if you don't, but the body is, it's still separation. No, if separation is real here and there, but there's definitely there. I can see that. That can be seen without anybody seeing it. There's the difference is when that is known as solid and real, meaning I know myself as solid and real, then that's real separation. It begins here and it ends there. But that's not really what's happening. What's happening is this, this seeing of that doesn't begin here. It doesn't begin anywhere. And it doesn't end there. It doesn't end anywhere. It's infinite. It's timeless. It's beginningless and endless, the whole, this appearance. I am, I am very angry. Oh. I... It's, of course, me wants to. What's well, my fault? Definitely. <laughs> yeah. At least we that, at least we agree on that. <laughs> so, <clears throat> it's no me over there. There's no me over there either. But I have the idea, but I'm me. Well, you might have. There might be the experience arising that says something needs to happen, or this is incomplete or any of those things yeah and can i do something to it's an illusion it and is. the idea that something needs to happen is just part of the illusion that wholeness could be created or found it can only be lost it's never found it is nothing i can do to there is no you i know this also yeah you don't know i don't know it i don't know there's no me i literally don't in the same way as there's no knowing of what this is. When you have glimpses and you come back, you kind of know. No, but that's the trick. You never do. That which you think you know is part of the experience or what the me thinks happened. It has no idea what happened because nobody can know what this is. But I know what me wasn't there when I come back. I understand that's your experience or that's what you remember. But the point is, is that's this. This is every glimpse. It never comes back because it is already. So what is a glimpse? A glimpse is the end of the experience of separation. But what it is or what it's like, you can't, tell, you can't say. You can say it's the absence of me. Yeah, but that's not what it is. That's what it's not. And that's pretty much all we talk about here. But this talking to you, definitely, it is a me conversation. There is no me. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely, I am me now. I, I feel oh. I'm me. Yeah, but that feeling now. isn't me. And that I, feeling is a feeling. It's just a feeling. Internet anymore. Yeah. Am I breaking up too? 
Anyway, the feeling is just a feeling. The individual lives in a, in a, in a world of experience. It knows what's happening through his experience. In the end, experience is no evidence of anything. It's just a form of knowing, of me adding experience to myself. Feelings are feelings. There's no, there's no need for a story about the feeling. The story about the feeling is my need to become. There is no intrinsic story in a feeling. It's just a feeling or a thought or a contracted energy. There's no necessar necessarily an experience of separation that comes out of a contracted energy. But it's painful. Yeah, pain happens even without me. It, it's an idea here that says, I'm sure it has to be a difference. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's the whole sense that there's something, <laughs> something needs to happen. But that sure that something that there is a difference is wholeness appearing as the feeling that there has to be a difference. It's like you, you, you ever felt it's like I, I just arrived in the end of the world and I'm just stuck there. Yeah. That's wholeness, having the experience of being stuck. Oh, amazing. It's good. It's wholeness. Otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No. Thank you so much, Jim. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Uh, sorry, it's here again, hey. uh, me. Hi, uh, Aniko. Yes. Uh, so, uh, just just one one more question. So, okay. I, I am I am not exist as as that that body. I am not exist as consciousness. No, no, there's no I. Uh, because there are, there is no I, but something is. Yeah. That you call ocean, or you call infinite yeah. or timeless something yeah. is yeah. so this is why this body going to die this yeah. something is is staying here forever no no mm -hmm. this something that is unchanging timeless infinite there's nothing unchanging ocean. in that sense there's in that sense there's nothing unchanging but so what what do you call uh, ocean the, this uh, yes what what is so, okay. which is and isn't. Sorry, what did he this say? This is yeah. and isn't. It's not is, a thing. Is and isn't. Yeah. So when when you say nothing appear as everything. Yeah. That's so this. there is a nothing that is appear as changing, but this nothing <clears throat> no. is, is no. something. No. no, no, the nothing and the everything are the same thing. But how? Yeah. Exactly. But, I don't understand. No, me either. So nothing uh, and everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know now. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Well done. <laughs> okay, I'm going now. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Bye, Aniko. <clears throat> Kim. Yeah, okay. Um, I can't stop laughing from Aniko. Uh, it is, uh, Jim, it seems that uh, this, um, you call it is chaos. Uh, from this chaos come really structured uh, answers. No, it is the it is it is the chaos is the apparent structure. It doesn't become structured. No, no, okay, yeah, but I, I just mean this when you you, you say it is chaos, uh, but this chaos, yeah, then you can say this chaos is really structured in a it way. It only uh, appears uh, structured. What? 
It only appears structured. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Now, now I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> But then it's just another thing. Uh, uh, this uh, story you tell, I, I think it's really good. This story with the drop of water. Uh, yeah. Uh, what, what is the different? Yeah, nothing. But mm. it also seems that this nothing is quite a lot. Well, it's everything. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Jim. This is Anu hey. again. Yeah. Um, um, so, uh, more about the cause and effect. Yeah. Is is a is a um, the apparent? Um, my vocabulary is not the same as. That's all right. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna try and uh, question you. Um, is a history something that we are creating now? Like the sense of. Like um, something happened, and so something is happening now. Is that no. the bondage? And I'm no, no. The bondage is that you know. The bondage is so because I'm getting a sense of total chaos. Yeah. And then there's a sense of oh, this happened, so this is happening. Yeah. And then this is going to happen. Yeah. Yes, I'm trying to build a little safe space for exactly. myself. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's no such thing. Yeah, I feel like I'm building little dams around myself. So yeah, that, you know, I, there's a sense of security that oh, yeah. I know what happened. I'm here, and and I'm going to be right. here. <laughs> yes. Wow, but this mm. chaos is beautiful. Oh yeah. my goodness! Free, so free, unconditional. Wow, wow, mm. would be so nice to just let go. <laughs> yeah, this is already let go. It's already oh. completely let go. Oh, the goodness. experience of building dams has no effect. On the reality that it's already chaos. That is just wow, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Thank goodness. It is. Yeah, totally. The safety is so overrated, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow, I'm getting a sense of like an energy just moving through me. But thank you, thank yeah. you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, Jim. Hey. Who's that? Said, say uh, Rajiv. Like, hey. You say in the middle uh, something like all, all there is is what's long for. That was very means uh, deeply resonated here because all the seeker does is it's all the time looking for something and searching and uh, it's not getting there because already the seeking itself yeah. is there. It is it. Totally. That, <laughs> That was amazing. It's every thought, every perception, every feeling, every sensation. Is it already? Yeah. yeah. So that was uh, very means. Uh, thank you for that. I would like yeah. to say. Hey, Arif. Hi again, Jim. Hi again. So uh, I was listening to you just a moment ago about knowing. So. This thing just struck me. So, knowing is actually death, isn't it? It's, yeah. Well, it's the, what we're talking about, yeah. Yeah. Just the collapse of it, it's like the apparent collapse of the aliveness of just yeah. being alive of this and <laughs> holy fuck! <laughs> wow. wow! Wow! So yeah. I'm, Because yeah, I don't know, um, I was just the, the reason when, the moment when I raised my hand, I was just getting this kind of something like this intuition came to me, and you know, they they do say in quantum physics about um, the collapse of the wave function, which is the cause of you know why there is uncertainty as to yeah. you know whether an electron is a wave or a particle. That's basically talking about. The point of knowing when you know it, it's there, and that's actually the the freeze or you know making it turning it into stone. Yes, that's why it changes, and they can't explain it because it never changes. It's never <laughs> fixed. It is and it isn't yeah. already. Do you know the same thing happens in mathematics? That mathematics they they always come up with these theorems to prove 
to do proofs of all yeah. these new theorems that people come up with. And they wanted to come up yeah. with that, keep coming up with these theorems to try to figure out, you know, the shorthand of being able to proof these things. Cause doing it, I mean, was, uh, line for line is obviously really complicated. So they try to come up and every time they do, it ends up with a paradox in it. Yes. So yes. they can't Absolutely. actually come up with an answer. It always ends up in a paradox because what they're running into is this. They're running into yeah, the end of the knower, being able to hold on to anything. Absolutely. So it just becomes a circular game. Really. Yeah, totally. Well, it just, it just, there's this experience that's on top of absolute unknowing, experiencing I know. <laughs> it's like building a house in the air. <laughs> like a sandcastle, just, yeah. just close well, to the but wind, in the air really. just, with no stability yeah, at all. It, it, yeah, absolutely. Looking for a black, uh, I mean, black cat in a dark room that's not there. I mean, yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I think it was an Austrian, right? I and mean, an Austrian mathematician, Kurt Gödel, who actually came up with the incompleteness theorem. He actually okay. said that you, you, you're never going to find out anything in mathematics because it essentially is a representation, and that's something that you imagine. So yeah, so it's yeah. not part. So. <laughs> Yeah. So just, I think he just felt it when he said, you know, it's yeah. complete, uh, you know, everything. I mean, uh, just it's, 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 it's an apparent knowing. Yeah. It just, it's, it's illusory action. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. Hello. Oh, oh. Um, Hi, Jim. Hi. It's Imish. Hi. Uh, so I'm actually quite new at this and I'm trying to understand. I'm trying mm. to rationalize a thing and I don't know my question is like proper or something. So what I understand from your words actually, are we living in Truman Show? Can we say that? <laughs> There's no one in the Truman Show. So, so it is the same, what you are talking about. No, because there are, peop there are actual people in the Truman Show. Yeah. Um, Jim Carrey is a person, an individual who doesn't know what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. So there isn't anyone here that doesn't know what's happening. There's something here that thinks or has the experience of knowing, which makes this appear as something it's not. Okay. So I will not take you long. And my another question is that you mentioned earlier this morning that uh, spiritualism is like a religion to you. And you mentioned one book, and I would like to learn the name of the writer. Spirituality. Um, Sogyal Rinpoche. Uh, He's an old Buddhist. Sogyal Rinpoche. Somebody will write it in the chat. Maybe Emerson can write it in the chat, and then you can see it. And oh, it's, yeah. called, it's called... Um, Spiritual materialism. Okay. It's not that impressive. I don't know why I keep talking about it. It's just that people talk about spirituality and it has everything to do with me. Spirituality is about me becoming, me getting, me learning, me knowing. Yeah. And that's that's the materialism that's being pointed to. Yeah, I do understand that. I and this message isn't about me. It's it's that there isn't a me. Okay. I seriously would like to come to Vienna and talk this yeah. about this face to face. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks. you for this, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye. Hey, Greg. Hey, Jim. How you doing? Hello Good, from Los thanks. Angeles. Los Angeles. I want to share a couple of things. Yeah. Um, I caught you at our 2 a.m. earlier today. Um, so I just wanted to share a couple of things because uh, I feel like I should thank everybody else because the yeah. questions, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and there's just uh, tears of laughter all, all through this. It's just glee. I don't know. I get yeah. this glee hearing you, yeah. and, but there's this funny thing on the zoom. There's this funny feature where as people leave the meeting, it says so-and-so left. So I'm having this thing in my mind, like all of us, there's people dropping cells, right? They're yeah. still on the screen, but they've left, they left, you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, so I just wanted to say, hey, share something funny. 
Oh, thanks. It's, it's so cool. And thanks everybody for the questions. Very cool. Mm, yeah. <coughs> Hey, Jory. Hey, Jim. <laughs> so um, I just kind of want to just sort of a follow up. Um, so um, I was talking about the baby being a, a person or being trained into being a person. Yeah. And that does so kind of seem to be like the beginnings, maybe like a baby, even though he knows he's a person or he has he behaves like he's an entity. Um, he doesn't have that feeling of lack, but at a certain point, I don't know when it happened. About 18 months. No, no. What I mean is like, I don't know when it happened when I had the feeling that there was something missing. About 18 months. Oh, you think so? Oh. Yeah. So, so you're, you're saying that maybe that happens at the same time. Oh, is that when she says it happens? Yeah. Well, no, she, I think she says that it happens, that, that what happens then is that the baby experiences or gets trained into believing that. It's yeah, this isn't that. This is actually a, an instantaneous. There's, a, there's a, a contraction and immediately out of that arises the experience of separation and the need to become. Right. See, that's what I'm saying is like when, when I think about myself, um, you know, when I was like seven years old or something like that, I don't think I had this gnawing feeling like something was wrong. Oh, most people don't recognize it at all. Most people can go through life and have enough sex or enough food or enough money or enough sports or enough whatever to not even know that they're seeking. Uh huh. But every, well, every individual... Every experience of separation seeks. Yeah. Oh. oh, okay. Part and parcel of the experience because the basic core fundamental sort of movement is something needs to happen. But like, it's not a problem until you realize that, oh my God. It's, something all, it's never a problem. The individual <laughs> is trying to overcome a problem that doesn't exist. Oh. <laughs> well, then, then. When, when there's an experience of something gnawing at you, yeah, then um, it's not very fun. No. So, <laughs> woe is me, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, but no, but I mean, I mean, I guess my point is that, um, you know, I, I experienced in my life that at a certain point, it, it was more of like a gnawing thing rather than like, Hey, you know, this is just life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's when it became a problem. And I, yeah. then I became a no, no, it's always a problem. The individual in its efforts to collect and have enough experience to make itself feel whole mm -hmm. is always trying to overcome that experience of lack, overcome the experience that something needs to happen. It's always trying to add to itself. If, if you call it spiritual or whatever, it doesn't, it, there's no real difference. It's all the same effort. It's all the same energy. But, but I became a spiritual seeker when no, I, there's no difference to being a spiritual seeker or a businessman or oh. whatever, whatever else. Oh, oh, okay. All right. There's no value to this message and there's no value to anything else. There's no need. It's already unconditionally, um, whatever. It's already unconditionally free. It has no need to be evaluated. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, thanks. I love it. No, I, I love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Savvy. 
Hey, I thought hey, your name was something else before. No, it was the same. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm just curious, um, are you ever going to come to California or back to the States? You're, you're breaking up a bit. I was wondering if you're ever going to come to California. Oh, yeah, we'd love to. I thought you yeah. were in, 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 in Hawaii. Hawaii? No. No. All right. This is my first time having a meeting. I've watched a lot of your videos. That's my first time. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Don't know. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. Okay. Cool. Cool. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Um, just, just so that we're clear about what we were talking about. There's whatever is happening. So this isn't actually substantive nor is it actual. You couldn't point to what we're talking about because the pointing is what we're talking about as well. There just simply isn't any real separation. It's unconditional and it's free already. It is what's longed for, but it's not what's wanted. It's impossible to want this because there's no way to get far enough away from it to want it. It is already. There is nothing that needs to happen. Everything, all effort is it as well. So nothing is gained, nothing is lost. It is already whole, just as it is. Yeah, love you guys. Thank you very much for showing up today. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. See you Thanks. in July. Hey, Yay. Happy. Bye bye. Thanks, Jim. Bye. Thank you, Aria. <laughs>